Hey guys, welcome to Advocore Cosplay, and today we're going to be starting our Batman build. And what better place to start with Batman than the gauntlets? It's my favorite part of his costume, and I have made a few gauntlets in my workshop. Though I have to say these are some of my favorites. But without further ado, let's get into it. So here we have our templates and our foam. I'm using 5mm foam here. 5mm uh, is pretty perfect for a lot of stuff. It's, it's pretty strong, it's not too thin, it's not too thick and it doesn't look too bulky on your body when you're wearing it. Now the templates I got from Jong Prod. Uh, he's a YouTuber who has a cosplay tutorial uh, channel and he also has templates available on Etsy. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to find these templates for yourself. Though I'm not going to be using all of his templates because I want to add a little bit of my own flavor to it and I want to add my LCD screen and I want to add a little more things. So I'm not using just his templates, I'm using my own templates as well. Now an important thing to remember is if you have a texture on one side of your foam, you're gonna to have to flip your templates over to get the other side of your body. This isn't an issue if you have smooth on both sides of your foam, but a lot of foam these days has a texture on one side, so it's something to be aware of. So now that we have our two pieces, we're going to use some contact cement, and we're gonna glue these together. Contact cement's very strong, you wanna be careful when you're using it, otherwise you might have to start all over again. Basically, we're going to smear it on one side, we're going to smear it on the other side, and we're going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes just for it to be touched dry, and then we can place the two pieces together. Now, you want to be careful not getting this on the main body like I just did, because uh, that can cause problems for you when you're painting it down the road. Luckily, it wasn't too bad on mine, and I was able to get rid of it in time. Now that we have our two pieces, we're going to carefully place them together. We do not want to make a mistake, otherwise we might have to start all over again. We want to just line up the edges. I generally do this against a table so we can get the cleanest lines possible. Perfect. It looks just like I hoped, yep. And we won't need to fix anything on this one, I don't think. And as we can see, it's already getting that nice gauntlet shape that we were hoping for. So we're going to hit this with a little bit of hot air now for my heat gun. You can do this with a hair dryer as well, but it's basically so that we can form it into a better shape. What this will do is that it'll melt the foam a little bit, and then when we've molded it, it'll cool down and retain the shape that we've actually shaped it into. Uh, it's very, very good technique to use on foam. You can do this with thermoplastics. Uh, sometimes it depends on what thermoplastic you're using though. So you see we can get a little bit of that shiny edge on there. I'm going along the edges and I will hit this from underneath because this foam has a texture. And when you hit the foam that has a texture, some of that texture will actually poke through to the other side. Now you can't really see that on the camera here, uh, but in real life it actually does show up. And we're just gonna roll this around like it would roll around an arm and you can see it's already looking a lot more cylindrical than what we had before. So this is my Motorola Moto G3. I had it a few years ago since I upgraded. And I have to make my own templates for this because this is a custom design. So I'm going to be tracing my phone on the outside. Again, you can do this with any phone that you own, uh, though you may need to adjust the measurements just to be a bit closer to what your phone size is. And I'm using this ruler to create about a two centimeter border because what this is going to be is a little bit like a box it's going to be like a little phone case that the phone can slide in and out of i don't want to have to glue it in there so it's permanently in there 
Now we're going to draw the little lines to cover up the edges. This will also help keep the phone in place so that it doesn't slip out uh, when I'm running around. And we're just going to trim off the edges here as well. Now I'm going to cut out the screen area. We're not going to cut anything else out, just the screen area, just to make sure that the screen fits the way we want it to. Uh, and that's the only bit that we're actually going to be showing because the rest of this is going to fold over almost like a box. So here we're just cutting out a cap to put on the end of the case. Now this is the plate area for both gauntlets and we're going to be using this to attach our phone case to. Uh, and on the other side, we're just going to have some detailing for our right arm as well. Uh, you can get these from Jean Prod as well. This is hitting his Arkham Knight Batman. Uh, though I'm not using the entire template, I'm just using the shape here uh, so that I can add my own detailing. And as you can see, we have our phone case here and the phone easily slips in and it easily slips out. So I'm very happy with this. The cap is on and we will be ready to attach the fins. Now the fins were 3D printed. You can make these out of foam. There are plenty of templates online for free. Uh, though my phone ones have actually come apart before they've fallen off, people bump into you. So I wanted to have something a little bit sturdier this time around uh, and I went for a 3D printed option. Now as you can see, we're going to glue the phone plate onto the gauntlet. And you might notice there's a big hole in the middle of the phone plate, and that's because I totally forgot. Gauntlets are round, and my templates were flat, so I needed to edit them to make sure that the phone would fit in a curved surface. Now when you're gluing two big pieces together like this, you want to be especially careful, because you're using a lot of glue, and you're also using a lot of space. And if you get one piece wrong, the entire alignment will be off or the piece will look crooked. It, it It's very difficult to glue two pieces together when they're this big. So you want to be very careful when you're gluing them. I would focus on the edges especially because the edges are the part that will hide all your lines and your mistakes as well. Uh, so as you see, I'm just going to line it up with the middle line of the two gauntlets and I'm going to be moving along the edges before moving into the center. And there's a good reason for that. Like I said, it's because I want to be very careful with my placement. Now this is for the right arm detail. We're just putting down some detailing that Jong had on his uh, template, though I totally forgot what orientation I was working in. I forgot to flip my template, so I kind of had to improvise here. And the same thing with this plate as with the phone plate. You wanna be careful gluing two pieces together like this. Uh, you don't wanna stuff up. You can actually see the lines on that detailing there. I actually scored those into that using a knife and then I heated it up. And when you do that with foam, it creates a nice detailed line. Now this stuff is polyester webbing. They use it on backpacks. You can get it at a hardware store. Uh, and this is what I'm gonna be using for my strapping. I have used elastic in the past, but elastic has its limitations and it almost feels a little tacky to me now. 
so I like the strapping for a little bit more detail and a little bit sturdier as well. So as you can see, we have our straps here and they are glued firmly on the inside. I'm probably gonna put some hot glue over that just to make sure that it's extra tight. And then when we put our straps on, we're going to go under and then we're gonna go over. And the reason we do that is because it looks very clean and very crisp when it's actually strapped up together. And so it's going to sit just like that. And you have this nice clean loop there. So we're going to be using Velcro for these gauntlets. Velcro is very handy. I like to have a level of adjustability in my costumes. If somebody has an arm that's bigger than me or an arm that's smaller than me, and I end up selling this costume down the road, not too many adjustments need to be made so that that person can wear it. Um, and Velcro really provides that. So you have a little one on the outside and a longer one on the inside, and anybody who has a different thickness in their arm to you can still wear the costume. Uh, you can also use buckles and I will be using those in a future video. Um, but for this one, I felt Velcro would be the best option. And as you can see, we're actually gonna glue some greeblies onto these gauntlets, and these are buckle greeblies. So they look just like buckles, and they sit over the strapping. This was a trick I learned from Jong Prod as well, and I use it in almost every costume I do now that has strapping. I'll always put down some buckles just because it really adds a sense of depth to that costume. And we have our gauntlets here and they're ready to be painted now. We have our buckles, our fins, they're looking very groovy and I'm very happy with them. So what we're gonna do before painting is we're gonna hit it with a coat of Plasti Dip, which I use as a primer before I paint anything on top of my costumes. And now comes my favorite part, the painting. Now I'm gonna be using a gold as an accent on these gauntlets and gold will be the main accent on a lot of my Batman pieces from now. I always liked that yellow, black, gray tone that Batman had, and the gold kind of provides a realistic yellow, because if I just went with a flat yellow, it would look very weird. So the gold's probably ideal. I have used bronze in the past and silver. I'll probably use a little bit of silver on this one as well. Uh, but for now, we're going to hit the fins with a gold. We'll probably hit the buckles with a bit of gold. And any accents we have on the actual gauntlet themselves, I'll probably use a bit of a silver. So the painting is finished, but we're not quite done yet because we're gonna hit it with a bit of rub and buff. Now rub and buff is a wax type substance. It's like paint uh, and a lot of cosplayers will use it for weathering. So I'm gonna use it on my fingertips because I find that I have a lot of control. Though a lot of people use a cloth or a piece of paper or something like that uh, to apply it. Though I find my fingers perfectly fine. And I'm gonna hit the edges first because whenever something metallic is hit, uh, or scraped, it's always the edges that will go first. And so we w really wanna get that edge, edge lord complex in, don't we? We wanna get a bit more edgy. So we're gonna hit it with some rub and buff and we're gonna go along these sides now. We're making it very, very edgy, very weathered. And I'm loving this look. I always love the silver on black. It really comes off really well. And as you can see, it really adds depth and character to some of these pieces. And what we are left with are two very awesome looking gauntlets, if I do say so myself. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description below for Zhang's Etsy store. Please check out his YouTube. He has some amazing work. And of course, check out my other videos. I will be finishing this Batman build, so you will see other parts of the suit being made. Of course, they will be tutorials. Also, check out my Instagram, my Facebook, Advocore Cosplay. Also, my Patreon if you want to support me and my work. And I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And as always, it's pure imagination.